Hello Church, uh, my name is Bruce Fannin, um, I'm the new treasurer for Rosebank Union and I took over from Ian Laxton earlier on this year as you might have, as you might recall. I had hoped to perhaps introduce myself more formally at the annual general meeting in March but the COVID uh, pandemic had other ideas about that. Before I continue just to perhaps chat about uh, the church's finances, I just wanted to give thanks to Ian Laxton for the many years of, of hard work that he dedicated to this church before he semigrated, as it were, down to Cape Town. I know that he put in a lot of structures and certainly much of the reporting structure that he put in place um, makes our job as the Finco an awful lot easier. So Ian, perhaps you are listening to this, but if you are, thank you for all the time and the efforts that you, that you put in. Um, I think what's, what's quite interesting about being involved in the finances of the church is there's almost a, a tension uh, in acting as the treasurer. On the one side, and I guess the foundation of any treasurer is that, uh, or any financial committee of a church, is that you are, are called to good stewardship. And so any decisions that we make will be around making certain that what we do with the finances is dealt with in the highest level of integrity and with good stewardship. What that means, though, is that we actually act perhaps pragmatically conservative, if that's the right word. And the tension that you have is that because we are a church and because we know that we worship a God that supplies all our needs, that faith may be the tension is that faith is on the other side of this pra pragmatic conservatism. And so at times you need to make decisions that means you to act in faith and just to trust that God will provide the needs of, of the church going forward, particularly if you are in, in his will. I think one of the things that, that Ian left um, was a fantastic financial committee. A FINCO that we have consists of, of a bunch of guys that um, are competent, are able, um, high level of integrity, um, and in fact, I almost want to cause them the, the counsel of the wise. And I found that my interaction in the months since I took over from Ian have been incredibly good. Um, and I know that they have certainly got the interests of the church at heart. As we turn to the, the church's finances, as it were, I'm sure that every person, in fact, most of you, if not all of the world in, indeed, have been impacted economically and financially by what has happened. Many people have had to take a, a reduction in salary. Some people have lost their jobs. They've been retrenched. And the church is not um, unaware of that, of what's happening out there. And we certainly are not immune to it. So we just thought it was wise to be able to share with the congregation, its members and its adherents, what is actually going on with the church's finances. You'll know that on the 26th of March, which is just over eight weeks ago now, we went into a total lockdown. Um, so it was only really the month of April, when we looked at the April results, that we could see how the finances were. And I know it's only one month, um, and we anticipated that maybe the, the, the income coming in would in fact decrease. And in fact, we were right. That is exactly what happened. So we are faced, if we look at the April results, that we were probably 30% down on the income that we expected to get in, and 25% down on uh, the expenses that we had to cover. And that obviously is a problem. And I think that the reason for me wanting to talk to you is just to let you know that in, in a, in a um, being transparent so that people are aware of, of where the church is. I think what is encouraging when we examine the figures, and this is some of the stuff that Ian left behind him in terms of the, the data analytics that we can look at. And what is encouraging is it's not that um, less people are giving in April, but that people were giving less, and that we fully understand. Obviously, if their uh, income has been reduced, we don't expect them to necessarily um, continue the high levels of contributions that they had. And so that is an encouraging aspect um, of, of the April results. Ian, in the November general meeting last year, made reference to the fact that we had, we had a good year in 2019. We had a couple of really nice donations that came in. Um, and that continued in January and March this year, where we also had some, some big donations. And if I look back at that, I really can see God's hand in that. And that what he's enabled us to do is to build what I call a war chest, so that we have the, the facilities and the, and the means to be able to continue our ministry without having to cut back too much. 
at Finco, when we met uh, a week or so ago, last Monday, in fact, um, we did some uh, planning and some scenario planning to see what that would look like. We took the April results and we saw what the, the deficit was at on and we worked out that the burn rate, we would chew through that cash, as it were, that we have um, accumulated within a six month period. And obviously that, that is of, of concern. So what is our response to that and what are we actually going to be doing? So the first thing we've done is we are relooking the budget. Looking at expenses that we probably won't incur, you know that we're not meeting at the church, you know that the staff aren't at the church, uh, that means there are certain costs like municipal charges and such which will reduce, but on the other side there are expenses that may increase. There's IT charges, there's data charges, telephone charges maybe that might increase. So we're basically re-looking the budget to see what we can do in terms of, of uh, cutting that down as much as possible. So what is the response that I, I turn to the church for? And I think the very first thing is to pray. And I would really covet your prayers as we, as we go through the season. I'm confident that God knows our needs. He knows where we should be going. He knows what we need to, to come through in this crisis. And so I would ask you to pray. I'm sure that many of you are praying about your own finances if you've had a reduction in pay. And I would just ask you to tag on to the end of that, if you like, the, the, the prayers uh, for the church finances itself. We don't necessarily want to start looking at reducing salaries of the, the staff here at uh, Rosebank Union. And we have made a commitment that for May anyway, that they will receive 100% of that pay. And that will be done on a flexible and agile basis as we go through month by month and see what the, the monthly income is. So I think that we just need to trust God in this process and know that he will come right, he will see us right, and that, that he will bring us to the end and we can turn around at the end of it and glorify God. Just in closing, I want to just thank the people that continue to give to this church. Uh, and I mean that with all honesty. I, we, um, we are very blessed in this church to have people that are loyal to us and they give on a regular basis and I thank you. But if I also look beyond that and I see the call for the coronavirus um, fund that we set up at the beginning or the end of March when, when the lockdown started and I've seen the amount of money that's come into that. I've seen the amount of, of, of money that's gone into Hope for Alex and, and, the, and the huge impact that all of that is making in the, in the communities and the societies around us. And so I really want to thank you for that and just ask you to continue to uphold this church um, as we go through the rest of this pandemic. I wish you God bless, keep safe, and uh, look forward to seeing you in church in hopefully the not-too-distant future. Thank you.